Those are all seed ticks crawling up my legs. I gotta get to the, I gotta get my tape out. Tape all these seed ticks off my body. Oh, there's another deer right there. Wow, there's a lot of deer right around our property. So, I used my trail cameras. I set them up last night. I put some corn out just to attract them, trying to figure out what deer are in the area. Because I was dropping the kids off and I got pictures this morning while I was dropping the kids off um, of these three deer that were feeding on the on the corn. And I thought, you know what? Maybe those deer are moving toward the road and then crossing the road and going into this, this uh, other place. So I drove over past that road and sure enough, there they were standing by the road moving through. Why, why am I using my cameras? I'm trying to figure out their travel patterns. I like to hunt deer over their natural movement patterns. I don't like to hunt over corn. So more than likely, I won't have a corn pile or anything like that when I start hunting this year, except if I'm taking Ellie or one of the kids out hunting, we may put some corn out. But for right now, I'm trying to figure out the, the pattern and the way that these deer use this property so that I can you know, get in between their travel patterns to uh, knock one down to put some venison in the freezer. We're gonna go hang one more camera here this morning, try to hang it where I think that they're at. Let's get in the woods. All right, guys, well, I am um, pulling in. When I was changing that other camera, as soon as I left that other camera, I drove past the woods and right inside this little patch, I actually saw another doe and two fawns that totals the amount of deer that I've seen with my eyes today to five on my property. And so I went ahead and swung in here. I found this nice little trail. Here's the woods. Kind of opens up in here. And then this kind of goes around. There's a, there's a very distinct trail right here that these deer are using. You can see that this, this grass is kind of beat down. And the trail goes basically down through here, right through here, and peters down through here like this. And what we have on this side, there is a very large creek. This is dried up right now. And this orange stakes is actually the piece of my property. So my property is right on the edge of these stakes. You can see this, that orange pin right there. This is the corner of my property. And so my property comes up to this creek and then turns and goes directly that way. The deer that I'm seeing are on my property and they're using this trail right here. Perfect little bedding area. And so when they, when they get ready to walk all the way out, they're gonna walk down this trail and when they get ready to exit into the field, that's where my camera's gonna be and catch them. I'm gonna walk just like this. When they walk up here, I stuck this camera right here on this tree. This camera's actually gonna take a picture of them right here by that big tree. They should be photoed right there. <laughs> Oh, look at this. This is horrible. I don't know if you guys can see that, but those are all seed ticks crawling up my legs. I got to get to the, I got to get my tape out, tape all these seed ticks off my body. Show you the process. Woo, there's a bunch of them too. Holy mackerel. Golly. Yeah, they got me good. I feel them. It feels like, it feels like, uh, spider webs ah. that's all ticks guys ticks. every one of those specks is a tick that's why you don't go in the woods with shorts on but you don't know until you put that tape on there Ooh, that's a big old pile of them man and they're on my shoes. Whew. That's a bunch. So when I get home, I'm going to have to take a bath. 
with my dog flea and tick remover shampoo because this is no good they're gonna be crawling on me for hours there's no way i'm gonna get all of them right now that's part of living in oklahoma and being in the woods is just dealing with ticks but those are baby seed ticks i mean i'm on my third piece of tape look how many ticks are on that thing called seed ticks you cannot see them you can barely feel them you just got to kind of be a native and know what you're looking for the very first time i ever got into a patch of seed ticks i was freaking out i was a little kid we were walking through the woods by the lake i felt something like spider webs on me and i looked down and my like looked like my leg was moving and it was all those seed ticks that scared me yeah, still quite a few of my shoes That's why it's very, very important to know about ticks uh, when you are in the woods. They are no joke. I couldn't imagine having all those bit into me. Now I'm going to check my clothes, make sure my clothes don't have any on them. Can't be too cautious when it comes to ticks. Ah, I'm going crazy, tick crazy. We got the most of them off of us. You're never going to get every one of them. That's why I like to use the um, flea and tick bath. All right, I'll lay all these pieces of tape out, show you guys how many ticks I actually had on me. Ugh. Let's get out of here. Let's move somewhere else. So we got our timer. So guys, what we got is this is a this is an automatic feeder. What happens is you set this for every day, what time you want it to feed, how much corn you want it to throw, how long you want it to throw that corn for. Set up for how much corn you're gonna put in the container. We actually have a solar panel hooked up to this one. So we got a little solar panel right here that we screwed into it. Just like that. When we drop the corn in, we'll show you a test here in a second. I'm gonna pour the corn in this. It falls, it sits here. When it turns on, it spins, it throws the corn out for a certain amount of time. And what that does, it gets the deer acclimated to coming in at a certain time. So when you get ready to take your kids hunting, they don't have to wait all day and see hopes to see something. You can almost set the time where the deer are gonna show up because they're gonna hear that corn feeder. They're gonna come out and then you can harvest the one that you want to make their non-patient lives be a little bit more productive. So we're gonna go hang this thing. Hold that, Ellie, hold that in place. Well, you hang it up. That and that will not come off. That way, all we got to do to undo it is just pull that knot, and that should hold. All we got to do is lift that lid up, pour the corn bag in. Now we don't have a full bag today, but we're gonna give them what we got. Okay, here you go. Yep, it's corn, dry corn. We'll just crimp just a couple ends here, just to keep the water out and the lid from blowing off, and keep the raccoons from getting into it. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna do a tester. Ellie, watch out, baby. Okay. It's gonna throw it in five seconds. Watch out. And that'll give them a little bit of corn and it'll kind of keep the deer fed, but also them coming in 
pretty regularly. Let's go. Woo! -hoo! Let's see what we got on camera. Hey, what do you think about putting up a deer feeder? Pretty cool. I bet someday when we build our house, we could just come out here into our woods and we could easily catch a deer. <laughs> no, we don't catch deer. We kill deer. I meant like that. Are you going to try to rope one? Is that why you want to catch one? <laughs> no. All right. Maybe I could just ride my horse and catch it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, now we're going to get these kids back to the house, feed them, and let them relax. So, hey, thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. And um, go down there and leave us a comment. Peace out. Today, we're going to cook some wild hog. Today, we're going to be making a pork adobo, and we're going to make it to the way I like to taste it. Over the top. Just like that. Wild hog pork adobo.